Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and today we're going to be taking a look at the AGM-84E Slam Standoff Lane Attack Missile for the Hornet. Now this is a subsonic cruise missile. It's based on the Harpoon anti-ship cruise missile. It's all weather, day and night, for precision attack against high-value targets. It integrates an INS and GPS guidance kit, a walleye data link unit, and an infrared Maverick seeker for the Harpoon. It allows man-in-the-loop guidance. It has a powerful warhead, and actually the same as used in a Tomahawk land attack missile. It was developed in only 48 months, and the slam was used in Operation Desert Storm against Iraqi coastal targets. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get to the uh, demonstration portion of the SLAM, let's take a look at some of the controls you'll be using. So we'll go Escape, Adjust Controls. We have the F-18C SIM, and from the category, we'll go to HOTAS with a hands-on stick and throttle. Uh, coming down, we'll go to the sensor control switch, particularly left and right. Further down, we have the throttle designator control, or TDC, down, left, right, and up. And finally, at the bottom, the weapon release button. Okay. So the first thing we'll do, of course, is we'll go to the air to ground master mode. And let's zoom in a bit, see what we're doing. And we'll select the slam from the SMS page. And we see that we have the alignment starting. And we're going to be waiting for the magic seven minutes and 30 seconds. And next to it is the AWW13 data link pod, or DL13. And we'll select that as well. The next step is to let the system know which SLAM needs to talk to the data link pod. So go to the weapon, and the SLAM here is station 8, and the one up here is station 2. Let's go station 8, and we see now that the SLAM is underneath the DL-13, uh, indicating that they are talking to each other. Uh, next, we can release the SLAM in both the pre-planned mode, or PP, as well as target of opportunity, or TOO. And we'll go TOO for this uh, little test. Uh, coming down, just like the Harpoon, we have cruise flights of medium, high, and low. And we select those with the push button here, which is in cycle of selection down here. And we'll go for high. Uh, below that, we have the E-Fuse. Uh, right now, we can see that it's off. And we'll press once to go to instantaneous. And then finally, at the bottom, we have uh, distance 10. Let's talk about that. So go to slam display. We have the upfront controller button, UFC. And here on the USC, we have the distance. Let's go ahead and select that. And what this is going to do is going to tell the missile at what range from the target to turn on its seeker sensor to beam that video back to us via the data link. And let's go with, say, 15 miles. Uh, coming back, we'll select, select the uh, release type to manual and the mission. And right now, we have no mission data coordinates for elevation because we haven't designated a target yet whether a, a designated waypoint, uh, designated by the, uh, the FLIR, or even the air-to-ground radar. So let's do that with the waypoint. So let's go to HSI, waypoint, dose, and waypoint designate. And we do that, we, we now is we have uh, two rings here on the HSI. The inner ring is the minimum range with the target in the center of that. And the outside ring is the maximum in range. So coming up to the, the HUD, we see we have SLAM selected. We are in TOO mode. We have 15 TMR uh, standing for uh, time to maximum range. Now 10 seconds. And then the range from us to the target, which is 58 miles. So we're almost in range right now. And there we go. So we have our in range queue up here. And if we go back to our main SMS page, we see we're in range, and we have 320 TTS, uh, time to seeker, in range on the HUD, and also we see that our aircraft icon is just inside that maximum range ring now. Uh, coming back, we also see that our SLAM is now aligned, and we have a ready indication for Station 8. So let's go ahead and press the weapon release button to release this weapon. One away. So at this point now, we're going to be uh, focusing on the uh, terminal seeker portion of it. So we see that in 287, 86 seconds now, the seeker is going to turn on automatically. 
So let's prepare for that. We're going to turn off SLAM up here. So now we're only seeing the uh, data link in video. And given that the seeker is not turned on yet, again, 15 miles from the target, uh, we're just going to see static. But we can see uh, 270 TTS now, which again is also, we'll duplicate this over here on the stores page, 264 now. Uh, coming back over, now just like, say, the Walleye or the Maverick, where you can slew a seeker uh, on the video, you first need to assign the TDC or the throttle designator control to that particular DDI. So because the SLAM video is on the left DDI, it will go left on the sensor control switch or SCS switch. And we do that, we now have the TDC diamond in the top right corner. Again, we have our TTS uh, countdown. And then here we have channel eight. And that's because we uh, launched a harpoon from station eight. So we wanna be on channel eight. Whereas let's say if we launch the uh, SLAM from station two, we wanna be on channel two. And finally, we have the aft antenna option. So if we were to uh, turn tail and fly away from the product, the uh, uh, target, the uh, antenna would still be facing the uh, SLAM to have the data link back and forth. But in this case, I'm going to be very non-tactical and drive directly towards that target. So we're uh, 186 seconds out, so let's uh, time accelerate a little bit. And it's also important to note that unlike, say, a JDAM or JSAL, which are very much fire-and-forget precision weapons, uh, the SLAM will definitely get you close to the target. But to be very precise, you want to generally take over manual control of the seeker during the terminal stage to be uh, that much more precise. So getting there, it's 60 seconds out. Thirty. Okay, 10 seconds out from seeker activation. And there we go. So we can see the seeker is actually looking down the water, so it's probably in a, uh, a diving angle. We can see that the seeker is uncaged, so if we slew it, we'll actually slew it and um, you know, a bit mess up your its um, uh, navigation at this point. You really don't want it to slew the seeker until you're very much late into the terminal stage. Uh, we also have the field of view button. We can cycle in and out. Let's actually take a look at that missile from the outside. Okay, we see now it's leveling off in the uh, low altitude penetration stage, and the next stage after this will be its terminal attack stage. And as it's in terminal, we'll see how far off the aim point is, and we'll adjust it as necessary. Okay, going to terminal. And we're going to be targeting one of those two aircraft on the ramp. And impact. So as you can see, using the SLAM, it's uh, relatively easy, but actually a whole lot of fun, particularly during that terminal stage. I uh, very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.